Warning, this video contains discussion of animation processes, cringe-inducing jokes, math, and usage of the metric system. If you're easily offended by any of those, you're a sissy and I'm laughing at you. You have been warned. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my magnum opus. The most pointless video on this channel that took me too much time to research, record, and edit. This is the video in which I'm going to determine the height of Red Eye's Black Dragon, at least in the Duelist Kingdom arc. I've decided to cover only that one solely due to the amount of research this sort of content requires. It's definitely something new for me to do, and I was more than happy to do it, however the sheer volume was staggering. It doesn't change the fact that, to my knowledge, something like that was never attempted. It's either going to be epically stupid or stupidly epic. There is no in-between with this one. Before we begin, a thing, or a rule if you will, has to be established. I'll be using only the anime depictions of Red Eyes Black Dragon from the Duelist Kingdom arc. I won't be using the manga one since there were too many differences between the anime and the manga. So with that out of the way, let's jump right into some animation practices. Before we dive into the process of finding the height of everyone's favorite dragon of color, we need to talk about framing. In animation, there are two types of frames, keyframes and in-between frames. In a show like Yu-Gi-Oh, the keyframes are most of the time either panels from the manga or their interpretations. In most cases, those frames are animated either by experienced animators, the key animators, or the animation director themselves. That's why those frames look so good and on the model, at least in most situations. When it comes to the in-between frames, they are, as the name suggests, between the keyframes, that are used to create the illusion of fluid motion. So since the camera doesn't stay on that kind of frame for too long, most of the time it gets animated by less experienced staff or interns altogether. That's one of the reasons there are some uh, really, how should I put it, interesting shots from various anime over the years. Why am I talking about this? Well, here are two shots from the same episode in the Duelist Kingdom arc. One is a keyframe, while the other is an in-between. Can you tell which one is which? Okay, but why am I talking about animation and frames? Is it to show off a bit of my research? Well. Duh. But there is an additional layer to it. Not as important, but still quite. You see, during Yu-Gi-Oh's four-year run, there's been more than a few animation directors responsible for various episodes. It's easy to spot if you look at the depiction of the same character throughout the series' run. Like those Yugi's you see on screen. By the way, I got them from Yu-Gi-Oh Greek FB on Instagram. Shoutouts, shoutouts to them. Look them up if you have a chance. This will have an impact on the overall calculations regarding the topics of today's video, since due to the lack of canon physical statistics, the animation directors have a lot of leeway in how they size Red Black Dragon. It's usually bigger than the human characters, however the scale is always different, which makes it near impossible to pinpoint an exact height this monster has. With that in mind, I'm going to get a rough estimate for each animation director separately. This is going to be a trip. Let's start by dissecting the first episode in which Red Eyes actually appeared. That would be episode 12 called Trial by Red Eyes in the dub or Black Flames Red Eyes Black Dragon in Japan. The episode aired on July 4th, 2000 in the Land of the Rising Sun and on January 19th, 2002 in Freedom Central. The animation director responsible for this piece was Shinji Sakuma from Studio Dub who also worked on a few Gundam series, Court Fight Vanguard, Inuyasha and many more series that I have never heard about, both as an anime director and a key animator. This episode features the finale of the duel between Joey and Rex Raptor. In order to figure everything out, we're going to focus on two frames in particular. The first one showcases Rex and Red Eyes in play as seen from the side, and the second one shows the finale of this duel and complete fossilization of Red Eyes Black Dragon. I'd be more than happy to focus on only one frame for the calculation however, life doesn't work like that. <laughs> unfortunately. In the first frame mentioned, we can see Red Ice's entire body, or at least from its ankle, nee? that thing, above. However, since the rest of Red Ice's legs are obscured due to the angle the scene is drawn in, we can only get a rough estimate regarding this monster height from this shot. That's where the second frame comes into play. Since it shows the entirety of Red Ice's body, you can use the calculations from the first frame and apply them to this one, giving us a pretty decent estimate for Red Ice's height in this episode. So now we have a plan, but since we're going to measure Red Ice's height, we need a ruler and we don't have one. 
All the duels arenas were an anime thing, since in the manga all the duels were taking place in special boxes, meaning that we don't know how big the arenas actually are. Does that mean that this is destined to fail? And I just lost a lot of my time talking about all of this? Like hell I'm going to let it end like this. We do have an option in regards to what we can use as a ruler of sort. In the first frame, together with Red Eyes, we have Rex, standing there on the same plane as the monster, at the least if you're thinking in terms of perspective. That means you can use Rex to get that ruler. However, as always, there's a problem. Only a part of Rex's body is visible in this frame. Should there be a possibility to use Rex's full height, that would have been perfect. However, as it stands, we cannot do that, meaning we have to get creative. And here is where the Yu-Gi-Oh! wiki comes into play. You see, most manga artists add various trivia about their characters throughout the series' run. Things like birthday, favorite food, least favorite food, blood type, weight, and height. We're going to use Rex's head. Yes, you heard me right. We're going to use Rex's head to measure Red Ice's height. And how are we going to do that? Well, you see, we're going to use human body proportions. It all rides on the assumption that the growth of people in the Dual Monsters universe is the same as we have on Earth. That means that the head to body ratio would be somewhere between 1 to 6 and 1 to 8. For simplicity, we're going to use the ratio of 1 to 7.5, which is one of the models used to determine an average person's height. Thanks to the information provided by the wiki, we know that Rex is 165 centimeters tall, which means that the head is 22 centimeters tall. I don't know if a head can be tall, but you get the gist of it. Now, where in this frame does the head end? Rex is never seen without his signature cap on, and we cannot take that into account for the calculations. That's why I decided to go with this. Okay, I know it looks silly. Oh, who am I kidding? It looks completely insane. However, I'm working with what I have, and what I have is 14 Rex heads tall Red Eyes Black Dragon. Now, oh, here's a sentence I never thought I'd say. With that, this Red Eyes is at least 308 centimeters tall. We're also going to be needing the size of Red Eyes' kneecap, which seems to be about two Rex's heads. And now we go to the second frame. Here we want to look for what we can use to get the length of Red Eyes' leg from the kneecap down. Thankfully, we can do that using said kneecap. The size of that part of the Red Eyes' leg is equal to about 1.14 of the length of the kneecap. In the first frame, the kneecap is located one Rex head above the cutaway provided by the frame's angle. That means that as a whole in this episode, Red Eyes' Black Dragon is about 14.14 Rex heads tall. I I really never thought I'd say that this this is completely insane. However, it still makes it a 311 centimeters tall Red Eyes Black Dragon. Red Eyes' appearance four episodes later in the Scars of Defeat, or as it was known in Japan, Clash, Blue Eyes vs. Red Eyes, is the second we will be dissecting. No other episodes providing any way of distinguishing Red Eyes' height, unfortunately. The animation director for this one is Hatsuki Tsuji, who was the series director for GX, directed the Pyramid of Light movie, and worked as animation director for series like Lupin the Third, Pokemon Heroes, Latios, and Latios movie. This man is a legend! Unfortunately, just like in the previous episode, we're going to have to jump through a few hoops in order to get to the height of Red Eyes Black Dragon in this episode. So first we're going to determine... So first we're going to have a look at the frame we'll be using to determine the height of the monster in this episode. This scene shows Red Eyes during Joey's duel with Kaiba. You can see the holographic spinning dual disc thingy right under it. From how the device worked in the episode, we can safely assume the dual disc is right under Red Eyes Black Dragon, meaning that we can use it as a measuring stick to get to our goal. 
Since the entire frame is made in an angle, we have to adjust for it. With it, we can get that Red Eyes is four dual discs tall. That includes the dual disc itself as well as the holographic blade thingy it produces while spinning. Here is where the second frame comes into play. In it, we have the spinning dual disc with the hologram blade thingy visible. Now, all we need to do is know how long the blade thingy is in comparison to the dual disc. According to my calculation, the blade thingy has the length of about 30% of the dual disc on each side, meaning that the entire thing, dual disc and the blade, is 1.6 dual disc long. Now we established another unknown we have to find, so let's see how we can get the length of the dual disc. Thankfully, we have another frame for it. This shot showcases two dual discs in a suitcase. With some editing, we can get that the suitcase is two and a quarter dual disc long. Some people might have some issues with this number since the card zones are on the disc themselves and I can agree with it. However, the entirety of the system has a 2D length equal to what we are looking for. With that out of the way, what we need to find now is the length of the suitcase. And of course, we have a frame for that. This shot shows Joey grabbing Kaiba's collar, which prompts the duel of the episode to start. However, we're not here for the plot, but for Kaiba's suitcase. From this, we can get the suitcase and compare its length to Kaiba's height, getting what we need. So, let's look into this. In this shot, Kaiba is equal to about 4.5 suitcases in length. And just like with Rex earlier, we're going to use the Yu-Gi-Oh! wiki to get Kaiba's height, which is 186 centimeters. And this means we can calculate the suitcase's length by dividing Kaiba's height by 4.5, getting 41 and 1 third centimeter. Like it was mentioned earlier, that length is equal to 2 and a quarter dual discs. With that, we get the diameter of the dual disc, which is a about 18.47 centimeters. With that knowledge, the 1.6 diameter of the dual disc is equal to 29.39 centimeters. Multiplying that by 4, since that's the number of the dual disc that makes the height of the Rise Black Dragon in the episode, we get about 117 and a half centimeter. I said about since we've been rounding up numbers, and by multiplying those numbers, the rounding error gets greater. That would mark the end of this video. At the end of the day, the height of Red Eyes Black Dragon depends on the animation director and can be explained by the episode setting. That's why the results we got were varied so extremely. In the first episode, we covered Red Eyes turned out to be one story high, while in the other, it's about an average height of a six year old. You can't get any more different than that. I hope you learned something new, and if you like this sort of thing, remember to leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you fancy. Ring the bell to can let YouTube know. Know that it should spam you with content. I'll be going now. See you all in the next video. Jacob signing out. Peace!